Only a single plane can pass through any set of three non-collinear points. Find a vector orthogonal to the plane containing the points P, Q, and R, which are non-collinear. We can use the three points to determine two vectors in the plane. For example, looking below, we can find vector PQ and vector PR in the plane. Next, if we determine the cross product of the two vectors, we can determine a vector orthogonal to the two vectors, which will also be orthogonal to the plane. To begin, let's find vector PQ in component form. The x component of vector PQ is 1 minus 4. The y component is 3 minus 1. And the z component is 2 minus negative 1. Simplifying the component form of vector PQ, which is a vector in the plane, has an x component of negative 3, a y component of 2, and a z component of 3. And now to determine the component form of vector PR, The x component of vector PR is negative 2 minus 4. The y component is negative 1 minus 1. And the z component is 1 minus negative 1. Simplifying, the x component is negative 6. The y component is negative 2. And the z component is positive 2. Now below we have the notes on how to determine the cross product of two vectors. Let's let vectors u and v be the two vectors in the plane. Vectors u and v can be any scalar multiple of vector pq or vector pr. Let's let vector u be equal to vector pq. Notice the components of vector PR have a common factor of 2. Let's let vector V, the second vector in the plane, be equal to 1 half times vector PR, indicating the components of vector V are negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. This will just make determining the cross product a little bit easier. And now we'll determine the cross product of vectors u and v, which again are two vectors in the plane containing the points p, q, and r. The cross product of the two vectors is equal to the 3 by 3 determinant, where the first row are the unit vectors i, j, and k. The second row are the components of vector u, which are negative 3, 2, 3. In the third row, the components of vector v, which are negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. This is equal to the 2 by 2 determinant formed by eliminating row 1 and column 1, which gives us entries of 2, 3, negative 1, 1, times the unit vector i, and then minus the 2 by 2 determinant formed by eliminating row 1 and column 2 which gives entries of negative 3, 3, negative 3, 1, times a unit vector j, and then plus the 2 by 2 determinant formed by eliminating row 1 and column 3, giving entries of negative 3, 2, negative 3, negative 1, times a unit vector k. And now we evaluate the 2 by 2 determinants to determine the vector that is orthogonal to the vectors u and v, which means it would also be orthogonal to the plane containing vectors p, q, and r. For the first two by two determinant, we have two times one, which is two, and then minus three times negative one, which is negative three, times the unit vector i, and then minus negative three times one, which is negative three, minus three times negative three, which is negative nine, times the unit vector j, plus negative three times negative one, which is three, minus two times negative three, which is negative six, times the unit vector k. Simplifying, we have five i minus six j plus nine k, 
This vector is orthogonal to vectors u and v, which means it's also orthogonal to the plane containing the three given points. And we can also write this in component form, where the x component is five, the y component is negative six, and the z component is nine. And of course, any scalar multiple of this vector would also be orthogonal to the plane. Before we go, let's take a look at this graphically. In this graph, we see the three given points in red. We also see the plane containing the three red points, which are non-collinear. This blue vector is the orthogonal vector that we found. Notice it is orthogonal or perpendicular to the plane. I sketched the vector, so the initial point was the point P in the plane. I hope you found this helpful.